Welcome to the third video in our mini series on enhanced scroll animations. After a couple of JavaScript focused videos, I wanted to switch things up with Next.js since I've seen a lot of you asking for it. Plus, there aren't many resources on YouTube right now showing how to create these immersive scroll experiences with Next.js, so here we are. Today, we are going to recreate this stunning scroll animation inspired by this website featured on Awards and Godly. Using GSAP and Scroll Trigger, along with the latest Use GSAP hook, we'll build this scroll experience that's packed with awesome effects. You will see a section that pin and unpin, a rotating clock style hand synced to the scroll, coordinated content updates, and revealing transitions, all driven by smooth animations. I won't lie, this one took a lot of hours to get just right, but we are going step by step so you can follow along easily. If you are into vanilla JavaScript, for those who are interested, I'll also be sharing a pure JavaScript version of this project as well. And if you are looking to dive deeper, you can unlock the source code by joining the pro membership through the link in the description. It's super affordable and you will get access to the source code for all these projects plus responsive website templates every month along with these two new micro projects each week. Alright, let's jump into it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. To save some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js app using Create Next app. First, let's clean things up. We'll start by removing any default styling in globals.css and page.module.css files. Then, in layout.js, I'll remove the font config applied to the body so we have a completely clean slate. Over in page.jsx, let's clear everything out. For now, we'll just have a basic container to work with. Now let's add the necessary dependencies. I'll install GSAP and Lenis for smooth scrolling with npm install. We'll use this later on. In the root of our project, I'll also create a public folder and add the image we'll be working with. One last setup, I'll add the use client directive at the top of the file since we'll be using useref for our scroll trigger instances. Alright, now let's start building out the structure of the page. Since this video will be a bit longer than usual, I'm not going to spend time creating a ton of components. If you are interested in component breakdowns using forward refs, check out my recent video on creating card animations with Next.js. But today, we are focusing only on the animations, so everything is going to be on this page. We'll set up two main sections, the sticky section and the about section. Inside the sticky section, I'll add a container for the rotating hand animation. This will include a div with the class hand which will hold an image. We'll use this app to add rotation to this container later. Next, I'll set up the animated text with an intro section. I'll include an h1 and a div with a couple of paragraph elements. Then, I'll add a container for the website content that will be revealed right before the section unpins during the scroll. Finally, the about section will just have some placeholder text for now. And that's all we need for this structure. Let's jump into styling. We'll be using globals.css to write all of our styling. Let's start with some global reset styles. I'll reset all the margins and paddings to zero, box sizing set to border box, and a few lines for smoother font rendering across browsers. Next, for the HTML and body, I am setting width to 100 viewport width and height to 1000 viewport height. This long height will allow us to have some more scrolling room for our animations. I'll also add a custom font family and set the font color to white. Now each section will have a full viewport width and height, which makes it easy to work with as we set up our animations. For H1 elements, I am setting the font size to 30 pixels, font weight to 500 and adding a slight negative letter spacing to tighten things up visually. The span inside H1 will have a slightly lighter color to create a bit of contrast. Paragraphs will have a font size of 16 pixels and I'll give them a justified alignment just as the original website. Images will take up the full width and height of their container and be set to object fit cover to maintain their aspect ratio. 
Initially, their opacity is set to zero since we'll be revealing them as part of our animation. In the about section, I'm centering its content with display flex and aligning everything in the middle. The background color here will be white with black text to contrast against the darker theme in the previous sections. Now let's move on to styling the sticky section. I'll set its background color to gray again same as the original website. Inside the hand container, I'll use absolute position and center it both vertically and horizontally on the screen. We are setting the size to 800 pixels and aligning items at the top with the transform origin at the center to make the future rotation smoother. The Z index is set to 2 to ensure it layers correctly. The hand will be a percentage based container with a rounded background. It's set to position absolute with overflow hidden so our image fits nicely inside. Next, the intro section is set up to be positioned relative to the center of the screen. I'll add a margin for the paragraph elements and set their initial opacity to zero for the animation effect. The website content section will be positioned at the center with a large H1 set to font size of 10 viewport width for a bold impact. Initially, its opacity is zero, so we can reveal it in the animation. And that's it for the CSS setup. Now that we have our styling in place, let's move back to page.jsx and set up our imports. First, I'll import the useRef hook from React since we'll need it for referencing our elements in the DOM. Next, I'll import React Lenis from Studio Fright, React Lenis for smooth scrolling, and GSAP for handling the animations. I'll also import scroll trigger from GSAP. To use scroll trigger, we need to register it with GSAP. This step is essential as it activates scroll trigger for our project. Now let's define our home component. I'll create several references to keep track of the key elements we'll animate. We'll start with sticky ref for the sticky section, then set up hand container ref and hand ref for the rotating hand and hand image ref for the image inside the hand. I'll also add intro ref for the entire intro section, h1 element ref for the title, intro copy ref for the paragraph elements and the website content ref for the website content section that will reveal during the scroll animation. With these refs in place, I'll set them on the corresponding HTML elements to ensure that GSAP can access and animate each element effectively. This setup is all we need to get our elements ready for animations. Next, since we'll be using the latest use gsap hook, we need to install the react version of gsap. You can do this by running npm install gsap react. Next, let's import the use gsap hook from gsap for react along with the other imports. Now I'm going to create one more reference, this time for the container that wraps everything. This container ref will define the scope for our animations inside the use gsap hook. I'll go ahead and set this new ref on the main container element in our JSX. 
Once the ref is in place, let's add the use this app hook. We'll pass in the container ref to define the scope of the animation. This ensures that all the animations we are about to create will be limited to the elements within this container. Within the use this app hook, I'll start by initializing a current cycle variable to keep track of which header we are on. I'm also adding an image reveal flag which we'll use later to control when the image becomes visible. Now I'll define a function called update header text. This function checks if our h1 element ref is available and if so, it updates the inner HTML with the next header from our intro headers array based on the current cycle. To create a dynamic experience, I'm defining an array called intro headers with the different header text variations. This array allows us to update the header text as we scroll. We'll call this function at each scroll cycle to display a different message. For the scroll interaction, I'm setting a pin height variable to window.innerHeight times 8. This extended height allows the pin section to stay in view as we animate multiple elements over a longer scroll distance. With that setup, let's create a scroll trigger. I'll set sticky section as the trigger and start the animation when the top of this element hits the top of the viewport. The end property uses our pin height to control how long the pinning effect lasts. While pin and pin spacing ensure the section remains pinned and the rest of the content flows smoothly around it. Now let's dive into the main scroll animation. I'm using the onUpdate callback within the scroll trigger to execute code each time the scroll position updates. First, I'll calculate the progress of the scroll animation which gives us a value between 0 and 1 as we scroll through the pinned section. Based on this, I'll calculate rotation progress which controls how far the hand will rotate. To keep the rotation consistent, I'll multiply progress by 8 and then divide by 5, capping the result at 1 using main function. This ensures we have a controlled smooth rotation. I'll then calculate total rotation by multiplying rotation progress by 1800 degrees and offsetting it by 90 degrees. The rotation in cycle variable then represents the rotation with a single 360 degree cycle. With this value, I'll use the subset method to apply the rotation directly to the hand container. This allows the hand to rotate in sync with the scroll progress, creating a clock-like effect. Next, I'll determine which cycle we are in by calculating new cycle. This variable tracks each 360 degree cycle of the hand. If the new cycle is different from current cycle and within the bounds of our intro headers array, I'll update the current cycle and call update header text function to display the corresponding header. This setup makes the hand rotate smoothly while changing the header text at each cycle. Next, I'll create an effect to reveal the image and animate the paragraphs based on the scroll cycle. Inside the scroll triggers on update callback, I'll check if we have reached the third cycle and whether the image reveal flag is false. If both conditions are met, I'll use GSAP to animate the hand image by setting its opacity to 1 over a quick 0.3 seconds. This reveals the image in sync with the scroll. Next, I'll animate the paragraphs in the intro copy section. Using GSAP's 2 method, I'll set x to 0 and opacity to 1 with a 0.5 second duration and a slight stagger of 0.1 seconds between each paragraph. Now, if the scroll moves away from third cycle, I'll reverse these animations. At that time, I'll fade out the image by setting its opacity back to 0 and sliding paragraphs back out by setting x to 20 and opacity to 0. This creates a smooth exit effect, hiding the elements until we scroll back to cycle 3. Next, I'll check if the progress is less than or equal to 6 by 8. If so, I'll calculate animation progress to determine the height and opacity changes for the hand and the header text. 
Using GSAP's interpolate utility, I'll animate the hand ref's height from 50% to 100% as we scroll through this section. Simultaneously, I'll fade out the H1 header by interpolating its opacity from 1 to 0. This setup creates a smooth transformation effect as the scroll progresses. Additionally, I'll set the intro ref's opacity to 1 so the intro section remains visible during this part of the animation. If the progress goes beyond 6 by 8, I'll hide the intro section by setting its opacity to 0. Next, I'll add another condition for when progress is within 7 by 8. Here, I'll animate the scale of the hand by interpolating from 1 to 20 based on scale progress. This gives the impression that hand is zooming out, adding the overall impact of the animation. Moving on, if progress is less than or equal to 7.5 by 8, I'll animate the opacity of the handle itself. By interpolating from 1 to 0, the hand gradually fades out, making room for the next section. And finally, if the progress is greater than 7.5 by 8, we'll reveal the website content. I'll interpolate the opacity from 0 to 1 so the website content fades in smoothly as we approach the end of the animation. If we are not in this final section, I'll keep the website content opacity set to 0. These targeted animations add more dimensions to the experience by scaling, fading and transforming elements as we scroll through the different progress points. Let's move on to the finishing touches. To complete the setup, I'll call the update header text function at the end of the animation logic. This ensures that our header text is set initially and matches the first scroll cycle. For cleanup, I'll add return function to remove all active scroll triggers when the component unmounts. Now let's wrap everything with React Lanis to smoothen our scroll experience. I'll set the root property to ensure it covers the entire component and I'll also pass in some options to control the scroll behavior. With React Lanis in place, our scroll animation feels smooth and fluid, adding the final layer of polish to the experience. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.